GTS 3 by Amazfit. A new generation, new features and new vision. But does it keep the same great battery endurance and feeling? Let's inspect! Hey, really nice to meet you, my name is Michael and if we see each other for the first time then uh, such a pleasure, I really hope you're gonna stay until the end of the video and watch everything I have to say about the Amazfit GTS 3. Let me take it off and by the way, the strap is uh, not the original one, I just like the color and uh, switched to this one. So that's the Amazfit GTS 3. An interesting wearable, a smartwatch, which obviously is not as smart as Apple Watch series or those devices which are based on Wear OS, but still uh, quite good about tracking health, supporting you when you're doing sports and also doing some productivity oriented tasks which can be extremely helpful so I would say yes it covers most of the things you would be looking for from smart wearables these days. Pretty much every year Amazfit are releasing a new generation of their wearable devices and this already is the third one of the GTS edition. Actually they, they do have two GTR and GTS with the GTS being the square or rectangular shaped device while you can find a round display on the GTR series. Now with the third generation the interesting part is that there is a Pro edition, it's only a GTR 3 Pro which has all the flagship great features and GTR and GTS 3 are somewhat slimlined and over here we do have some differences and things that are kind of missing and I'm still not quite convinced that if you own a GTS 2, this would be a reasonable upgrade, so we can stay until the end of the video when we're gonna make this summary and figure out whether that's a great purchase or not. In this video, I'd like to cover everything about the hardware and all the upgrades made, the significant steps forward that the software makes, and of course, real life usage. Let's go! Price is of course quite important, therefore sharing with you right away that Amazfit GTS 3 has been launched for 179 US dollars, which is the same price tag as the predecessors, and given the price bumps a lot of other tech gadgets have seen this year, that's pretty good news. It also is worth noting that in Europe, Amazfit are keeping their prices down to 150 euro or pounds, which makes them a really attractive choice. On the channel, I've reviewed tons of other wearables in the range between $100 and $200, and the GTS 3 needs to show some really good results in order to win your sympathies, so let's see about the hardware first. The unboxing part is always something to enjoy with Amazfit's devices. Of course, through the years, the packaging style has been further refined. From what stays on the box, we know that it's powered by Zep OS, and Zep is the company that has been acquired by Huami, the manufacturer of Amazfit, so they've leveraged a lot of the software ideas. This here is the so-called Terra Rosa edition. There also are the ivory white and the graphite black, with each of the colors being quite stylish and good looking. As for accessories, the charging dock and the user guide. Luckily, inside the Zep app, there are enough tutorials and information to get you up to speed with the watch functions as well. The sign on the first side looks fantastic. GTS 3 is made from lightweight yet durable aircraft aluminium alloy with curved glass on the display crafted to elevate the sleek look. Thanks to the sides, you do have the feeling it's quite a thin device despite the fact there's a little bump at the bottom hosting most of the health tracking sensors. The screen is definitely a highlight, premium experience, with coating that, if not entirely eliminating, then at least severely reducing the impact of fingerprints. Around 72% screen to body ratio and that's quite an excellent achievement for a smartwatch. You would be surprised by the peak brightness, it's up to 1000 nits, very close to the peak brightness of modern smartphone flagships. I will cover now the tech highlights, starting with the 1.75 inches square AMOLED screen, with Ultra HD resolution, 250mAh battery, animated and editable watch faces, advanced HR sensor, SpO2 tracking, smart sport detection, GPS, more than 150 workout modes, 5 ATM waterproofness, Alexa as a smart assistant for certain regions though, and the wonderful Zep app for management. All the technical specs are really good and yes, we can see some notable improvements and I would say the nicest part about the uh, improvements is the performance. Just let me 
turn the screen on and just notice the scrolling, how smooth and nice it feels. And the overall feeling of using this watch is like, you, you know that that's a premium device. But there's something missing, something that uh, Amazfit have decided to remove after Generation 2, and that would be the speaker. Because with Generation 2, you can actually make phone calls, and yes, the smartwatch needs to be connected to your phone through Bluetooth, and it's a call which is actually transferred through Bluetooth, so it's uh, not entirely independent, but still something. To give you an example why this could be so important, especially if your hands are sweaty or dirty, and you don't want to make your smartphone dirty, you can just pick and uh, answer the phone call from your wrist. And uh, sometimes when you're doing sports, you're on the bike, your phone is in the backpack, you know, answering to a call from the watch could be really helpful. This button on the side acts as a home button, but also brings you to the app list. There is no double press action, hopefully something we may get in the future. The press and hold is configurable. The crown is rotating, but just physically, and it has no impact on the navigation, sadly. Swipe down, and here are the quick toggles. You would be surprised by their amounts, and it's nice that everything is at the same page and you don't have to scroll between screens in order to get the things that you're looking for. I would have used slightly different icon set though. For example, the Find Phone feature is not that obvious, and here it is. Swiping gestures are also available. Left and right, taking a closer look at the cards reveals how much more capable Zep OS has become. Most of the features are well configurable and accessible even from the card itself. Taking the heart rate as an example, it opens the app and you have access to most settings, including the intensity of measuring. The more frequent the snaps are, the faster the battery is going to drain. You will discover a lot of improvements in any software aspect. SpO2 tracking is now automatic, there's O2 work out detection, smart analysis of most of your health data, there even is a calendar app and task list. So finally, Amazfit are making some steps towards enabling you to have your schedule on the watch, something that until now has been an exclusive feature for the so-called true smartwatches. Those based on Wear OS or Tizen OS. Of course, there are a bunch of other useful and usual for smartwatches apps, like alarms, stopwatch, compass, barometer, female cycle tracking, right for you, dear ladies, and even a camera remote. For the first time ever, an Amazfit device allows installing of extra apps. That's right, from the Zep smartphone app, you will find an option called App Store. None of the apps inside sounds like a must-have, but it's a start gives me the hope that someday there might be an option for navigation similar to Google Maps. This reminds me to show you the workout section on the GTS 3 and something I actually did is to program the power button to press and hold and that's opening now the list with the workout and we'll come back to this list in just a moment. Prior to that, uh, I want to check with you, have you ever heard about GPS issues in the Amazfit GT series? Because I have. With the Amazfit GTR there have been a lot of complaints and you can check some Facebook groups or Reddit subforums. You know, it's been full of people complaining about the inaccurate GPS. I didn't really experience it that much with my GTR1, but with the GTR Generation 2, yes, I did notice some significant issues and that's why I've been very thoroughly testing the GPS performance here on the GTS3. And I can say that it performs great, it's super accurate and it's the most accurate GPS solution not only for this Amazfit product line, but I would say for this kind of smart wearables, that really is already one of the best GPS implementations. Also, the variety of sports is mind-blowing. Yes, you can customize the list, and yes, you can adjust most of them in terms of targets, laps, distance notifications, it's all there. Kudos to Amazfit for listing all the sports types, I can't recall any other vendor showing such a complete list with all the workout modes. So, inside the Zep app, loads of data. You can spend hours reading about your health analysis and get recommendations how you could improve your quality of life. If you feed the smartwatch with data, meaning wearing it, it will pay off by sharing with you some remarkable insights about sleep, stress, blood oxygen saturation and PAI. Sometimes this is the kind of boost that all of us need so that we get our motivation to live a healthier life and also can save you some good money from visiting a coach or fitness instructor. I'm not saying it can fully replace professional consultants, 
but it can be a trustworthy source for some more basic advices. The thing I couldn't really try is the Alexa feature, couldn't trick the phone about my region, so just showing you the supported countries listed in the smartphone app. Now, the things that you cannot do with this watch and I didn't quite like, you can't use any navigation. While GPS is present, there is no app to do that. There is no speaker integration, therefore no phone calls. There is Bluetooth, but you can't add any wireless earbuds. It's anyways pointless, since there is no access to the local storage and you can't keep music files on it. And no Wi-Fi. Downloading updates may really take a long time. The update I had to install took around an hour and a half. In the end, to sum things up, this is a smartwatch with very beautiful design, very premium feeling and it's at the same time lightweight. For health tracking, perfect. For sports, almost perfect since you cannot listen to music while you're doing sports. For smart features, sort of. Many of the apps have become a lot smarter, but since we have no speaker and Alexa covers just a few countries, that's a limitation. Honestly, I don't see this as a worthy upgrade of the GTS 2 in terms of hardware, but if you're looking to improve the feeling, because it feels really nicely premium, and if you're looking to improve the user experience, that clearly is a lot better. You can see advancement, software steps up, pretty much every aspect, settings, features, the app, development, the smartphone app is also a lot better, so I think in terms of software it's really good. But other sections like battery, nah, not that good, in fact the battery inside is a bit smaller than the one that the GTR 3 has, and therefore the battery life was not that stellar while I was testing. I made it promise around 10 days, and actually with always on display, I was Hardly getting full days of usage with everything on, of course, in terms of tracking. But if you disable the always on screen, then you can count on around 10, 12, sometimes even more if you don't have too frequent updates on uh, SPO2 and heart rate and all the Pi features and so on and so forth. Therefore, kind of mixed feelings, very beautiful. And um, unfortunately, the hardware is not that improved to the previous generation, if there is any improvement at all. But the software, so big steps forward and kudos to the Amazfit team for this fantastic development of the software. And if they keep up <laughs> working on the software in, in pretty much the same pace, I'm very sure that they're going to catch up with the fun functionality on uh, smart operating systems like Wear OS, Amaz maybe Tizen OS. That's been everything about today's review of the Amazfit GTS 3 and I hope that this thorough inspection and um, all these examples are just about right to give you the chance to make the right buying decision or to get to know more about the world of smart wearables. So, if you enjoyed the video, give us a like. Uh, not that YouTube counts the dislikes, but if you decide that you dislike the video, you can at least let me know because I'm going to see these statistics. And if you have some more suggestions, ideas, feedback about the device to share, please comment down below. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'm Michael. Wish you a fantastic day. Gonna see you soon. Bye.